Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your Rowdy Ranch man, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about some War of the Realms erratas and some WWE Wave 2 news, if we can call it that. This is episode 402. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they six yeah. people think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, the back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is your Dial H for Hero Clicks champion, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, yeah, it's me. Fresh off. <laughs> what have I done? Like a cumulative 12 hours of podcasting in the last two weeks? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we roughly podcast a lot. three weeks, I guess. Oh, it's I, tough being I will the, say, uh, the best podcast in all of Hero Clicks and <laughs> longest least, running podcast and making the, the most, most consistent. content consistently. Yeah. yeah. Sure, is uh, a hard, sure is a hard thing to do. I will say, as an update to anyone that paid attention, cared at all, um, when everything was said and done and all of the, uh, what, what do they call it, auction items and everything like that were done, uh, we did successfully raise over a thousand dollars it was like a thousand fifty uh at the end of the day between i mean the bulk of that of course being during the live stream but then yeah we we got over like the little little bit of like two hundred dollars left to get um over a thousand dollars raised to charity so yeah that was i won't say that's what made me happy because i just inserted it randomly but that was pretty cool. I was calculating no, that, that uh, awesome. earlier this week, and not too bad for two schmucks with microphones. That's what I'll say. True. Uh, and just big, big thanks to everybody that went out, donated, and you know, watched the live stream, and yeah, helped helped get us to that number. Bought stuff from the auction. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I get to work on a piece. Um, me and good old Chance McCall, uh, Florida boy, as they call him. Um, or Ranch Hand 2.0. He's got a lot of nicknames. Uh, I don't think Florida Boy is one of them. But uh, we do have a piece picked out, so that'll be on an upcoming video for Sculpt Swap. I'm pretty excited. It's going to be kind of challenging to paint, but I'm actually going to I'm going to try and mod it a little bit too. Add some Ooh. of my own flair to the the sculpt that I found. Nice, nice man. Love it. Uh, all right. What did make you happy this week? <laughs> yeah. So what did make me happy this week? I mean, of course. Uh, the charity like totally knit all up that that was pretty cool do you that was... know um which charity got the most who won who won our our battle do you have that uh i do not have i did okay. not like count like the split um okay but i think the bulk of not necessarily the bulk but i think um a large majority of the live stream went to modest needs yeah okay gotcha, gotcha. yeah i i have not split up the uh, and tallied it at all but um I'm pretty sure that's it was like five to three, like five hundred to three hundred ish during the live stream, and then yeah, because because the charity items were split between the two of us, I'm assuming that it like the it's ended up about the same afterwards. Okay, gotcha. Uh, but what made me happy this week was I finally got to open one of my board games. I opened up Robo Rally, which is a fun. It's pretty rules intensive at first but it's a fun game where you've got multiple maps and you can kind of combine them and stuff if you really get into it um goes between i think two to six players available and then you've got um you've got these little robot figures and you start somewhere on the map and the goal is to get to the little checkpoints uh but like the the kicker is the map has stuff that's like going on and you go in um well let me explain it this way. You have to program your robot. So you have, you draw nine random cards and then you place like five cards face down as like each, each slot is what your robot's going to do in that time frame. So whoever goes first goes, 
and then whoever goes second does their first one and then like so on and then the map does something and then it goes to like the second one and so things can mess up your robot like another robot can bump into yours the map can move your robot you really have to like strategize and plan it out ahead of time and it was just a really fun game to try and work through but uh it's i don't know it's pretty cool i think i'll keep trying to play it but yeah i'm finally working through some of my uh board games that have just been collecting dust on the shelf and so nice. that's that's been fun nice man nice uh my entire last week whatever all of it was was awesome so it started off strong with the super bowl um didn't really care who won the team i was just rooting for just to root for lost which didn't matter to me what was cool is that we played this like square game i don't know i've never done it before but it was for like uh, a good cause. So it was like a $50 square. And then I ended up winning the score at the halftime and the end result score for the Super Bowl. So I got a uh, $1,500 uh, payout to start the week, which was really awesome. So that's my $50 uh, initial investment. You know, it's $1,450. Bucks, pretty sweet. And I still didn't buy any War of the Realms with all that because the set <laughs> sucks. Um, and then. Uh, not going to talk too much about Valentine's Day because don't make anybody incredibly jealous. But we did do this, however, which is really cool. There's an American Ninja Warrior gym in Sioux Falls. Oh, nice. And we tried that for a bit. You kind of have to be able... Simeon, you would probably be better at this. It's a lot of climbing, obviously. Yeah, um, a lot of body weight kinda, exercise kind of stuff. You kind of got to be able to like hold yourself up with one hand in order to do like 70% of all this stuff there. Um, and I, I cannot, I cannot hold myself up with one arm, like with both hands, easy, totally. But when you have to like move like the little pegs or swing from thing to thing, there's sort of like some stuff you can get into the rhythm of doing, like if you swing back and forth and all that, there's a lot of momentum to it and everything. Um, but the warped wall, I was pretty dang good at the warped wall. I could do their second highest warped wall, which is like 14 feet, I think. Nice. Um, I felt pretty, yeah, I felt pretty good doing that. Um, and In then of course, footwear, the virus, did you have special footwear when you were doing this? Special footwear. I mean, I had tennis shoes on. Okay. Yeah. I I was not wearing cowboy boots. If that's what we're, <laughs> we're been questioning. Been it would have been, been pretty see. funny. Wear the jorts and cowboy boots and show up to their, <laughs> their Ninja Warrior gym. It, it's funny. Cause the first question he asked me was like, do uh CrossFit calisthenics, any of that? And I'm like, son, a ranch or well, I didn't say any of that, but I was just like, no, of course I don't do cross ugh, CrossFit. Ugh, 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 ugh. Um, but it was really fun. Woke up incredibly sore. My shoulders have never hurt more. Like my forearms, my biceps, just like every every part of my arm hurt like crazy from trying to like hang and swing and do all that stuff. But it, it was still super duper fun. Uh and then the week ended with the first Two shows of the play that I'm in right now were a success. They went fantastically. They went really well. Remembered most of my lines or, you know, enough so the audience couldn't tell. I, did, I forgot a line is all that matters. So that went well. Uh, there is one point in the show where I say something that is like kind of funny. But the second crowd we had this weekend had uproarious laughter and like applause and i was like okay it's not that funny let's calm down <laughs> um and and like it made me break i've never broken on stage this bad before but they were laughing so hard i like couldn't help but like crack out like a grin and laugh a little bit you know it was just like infectious they, yeah it was infectious they laughed way too long they laughed for like a, a solid maybe not a minute but like 30, 40 seconds of laughter where it was like, all right. And that was halfway through a line. And I was like, dang, I'm going to say the second part, which is also a joke, which now they're going to laugh at again, which they did. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm dying up here. It was so hard to hold it in, which which I didn't. I laughed. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't not laugh. And then the rest of the show is just me trying to not think back to that and not make myself <laughs> laugh again, basically. Um, but yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing harder than trying to hold back laughter when you're like already like on like the edge of laughing and you just yeah physically nothing harder than that is what i'm saying no uh yeah, yeah it sounds like a lot of fun 
Yeah, no. So it was just a, it was just an awesome week overall. Well, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and talk about the news. So really quickly, WWE Wave 2 had a release date. Some website had it up for February 16th. Not an official WizKids release. The official WizKids release was whatever, September or something last year, or it was earlier January last year and all this at the time. But now there's a few other websites. So obviously there was no word of WWE getting dropped on the 16th of February. That was War of the Realms release date. So it wouldn't make sense to drop two sets right away. Uh, on the same time, giving I mean, the Eternals the movie of the did doubt. kind of get snuck in there with uh, it was like Empire, right? Was, like it, was it not before? like yeah, like a week before Empire? It wasn't the same day though. No, you know. Yeah. So I, I'll say the new WWE in quotations. The new WWE Wave Two release date is March twenty first, uh, as per this Poto Mac. Super weird HeroClix website. It's uh, a distrib. It is a distribution website, however. So that's yeah, that's maybe something. It also says Disney Plus's release is March thirty first uh, on this thing. So on WizKids' official release forums, it just says March release for Disney Plus. It doesn't have an exact day or date. Um, so maybe we'll have to see. Um, they put March twenty first being WWE Wave two. Uh, and then they also have, what is it, June 30th for X-Men, X of Swords, which, to be fair, WizKids and their solicits did say that X of Swords and all that stuff was going to come out in June. So I, I like... don't know how much credit we can give this Poto Mac distribution <laughs> website, but... Uh, With a name yeah. like that, you have to trust them. Uh, I guess so. I feel like that's way too soon. War of the... I mean, um, obviously, I'm not Very buying into War of the together. Realms. I don't think you are either. Uh, not too much, at least. I'll probably pick up some singles, but I feel like Disney Plus dropping almost only a month after is just, I feel bad for anyone that or, like, really wants to collect a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, with Disney Plus coming out, I mean, I've made the conscious decision that I don't need any War of the Realms. I need two figures that aren't rares, you know? I need Wrecker, Prime, and then I need Crusader. That is it in the set, besides some rares and commons, which are just... Get those from friends for a dollar, you know, and then I need legacy cards. So there's there's no reason for me to buy War of the Realms. There's nothing in that set for me at all, you know. Right. So I I made that conscious decision to skip that because I knew I was going to keep it for Disney Plus. But if you if you were like, oh, I'm going to buy everything in War of the Realms, buy everything in Empire, you know, buy whatever. Let's say a case, uh, maybe even more if you're uh, Brad Churzall or something, something crazy like that. Um, but then it's like Disney Plus also coming this close and a price hike. No, that is rough. Like having sets that close together plus a price hike is not a fun formula. It's not uh, a great recipe for. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be going to be a bit hard to, uh, to convince people to c keep playing this game after that price hike, especially if they weren't like slightly invested beforehand. Getting new people right. on board is going to be rough. Um, but luckily with that price hike comes, you know, great quality control. And uh, so we've got a list of erratas and clarifications <laughs> that uh, WizKids dropped, I believe, before the set uh, or on the same day. Dropped same Wednesday. day. So same, same day, day as set release, which, you know, kudos to being timely. Um, I do have some choice thoughts about the one change that was necessary or actually matters to anyone. But uh, so... The erratas or clarifications. So first clarification was for common Hercules. It says the figure's character card should not have exploit weakness listed. That's all it says. Doesn't say like it was something else supposed to be there. Uh, no idea. I don't even personally remember his character card having exploit weakness listed because it was such a like blank bum figure to me. 100 points of like close combat. So like, honestly, I think there's more flavor to the Hercules from the Mighty Thor set. Um, but yeah, that was the first clarification. The next ones were all legacy cards and it was just the legacy cards didn't get printed with the correct starting lines. Um, or like they had point values listed without starting lines for those point values or whatever. So the Thor's mighty chariot should have a 350 point value for the green starting line, which I noticed right off the bat because there was a green starting line 
and the top dial just didn't have a point value. Like there was a point value for all the other point values or a line for all the other point values, but then there wasn't a point value for the top. And I was like, maybe it's 300, but no, it's 350. Uh, Surter should indicate a, the card should indicate a purple starting line on click 20. Obviously anyone that's played in the last four years should know where Surter's 25 point line is. Um, but they obviously have to clarify because some people need that clarification. Um, so yeah, that's the 20, the last click essentially for Surter is going to be the, the purple starting line. Same with Ymir click 21 is the purple starting line. Those are the retaliation clicks. Anyone that's, like I said, anyone that's played with Colossals since they've been retaliating, uh, probably could have surmised that that was where that point value is supposed to be but to be tournament legal i guess they have to correct it that and then the only errata that we got is for the super rare hella so if you listen to 401 uh we probably mentioned a little bit about like how she could kind of break the game with her mission points how you could do stuff with uh killing off your own friendly characters and stuff like that um so the errata is a gathering of the dead whenever a standard character is KO'd by an effect opposing to them. So it was just when a standard character is KO'd, um, but now it is by an effect opposing to them. So that means, you know, poison attacks, uh, any kind of like free damage, any kind of damage at all, even mystics triggers this, anything like that works, but you will not be able to like, have a figure energy explode friendlies or pulse wave friendlies or whatever and get the grave markers so yeah other than that uh i think hella is now near unplayable um she's just way too many points to build into like a mission point team the droggers or whatever it is that she makes yeah the drogger warriors aren't super good they have like one damage exploit so it's not really worth that um, this is a case where I think if I'm playing a Hela, I'm going to reach back to the Mighty Thor again because that was like any time a character died, so didn't like specify how. I will say this was one of like the more interesting mission point figures. Um, I did see, I can't remember where it was, I did see people talking about how it didn't make sense thematically for you to attack your own like characters or whatever. And I was like, well, it kind of does for Hela because she's the goddess of death, right? So are you saying that she wouldn't kill a bunch of like random, like, you know, bystanders or whatever that are quote unquote on her team? Like just imagine they're cultists and she's sacrificing them to make droggers, like Draugr warriors. That would have made sense to me, but that's all I'm going to say. I don't want to talk about Hela. She's not worth talking about anymore. It's not interesting anymore. That's all the changes and, clarifications fair enough um i mean yeah i i don't have any crazy big thoughts and opinions i think right away i was like oh man whoa hella is busted but then you kind of think about where the game state is at and everything and how easy it is to get across the map get it out with across the map you know what i mean like so i i would have i would have been interested in seeing it i'm i am a little tired of these same day or before the set comes out, erratas. Those are lame. Yeah. Obviously, I'm some fine of these with are the clarifications. Like that yeah. Should have been normal. Clarifications are okay. Yeah. So, like, number one, Whiskets. I will say this your legacy cards, this last set was really, really good, except for these misprints. These misprints sucked. You guys need to work on that. You're just editing. That's all that is. But the, the, physical card was really good. The, the ones in Empire were way too stocky and like thick for legacy cards. And then, like, the first ones that came out were, like, way too, like, thin and a little weird, you know? But these ones felt just right. These were some... I don't know if you've felt any of these legacy cards, um, but they, they're some just right feeling. Like, the porridge is just right. <laughs> yeah, Perfect I did get uh, the Fandral uh, legacy card. Oh, yeah. Um, not because I bought enough pro- product, but because in one of the pre-releases that we did... Uh, I got like second, and so that was like my prize yeah. for getting second was oh, legacy dope. card. Nice, nice. Uh, all right, well that is that is all the news. MBD pushback and <laughs> some radis. Uh, so let's go ahead and answer some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens. 
I love it when the news takes like 10 no minutes. Time. <laughs> and then we get to talk about ourselves for the next hour and a half. Beautiful. Uh, I believe they start at February 1st. I think everything before that we have. Yeah, let me. Yeah, I think so. I think I think it's, up yeah. Again. Year. Uh, but Bill says, what song that you think really represents a hero clicks figure? Uh, he's going to be taking Mole Man, Bollock Man, excuse me, and saying, can't get next to you by Temptations. And he says, uh, Calder isn't allowed to choose Cap for this exercise. So I will not choose Captain Marvel for this exercise, Bill. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> no Captain Marvel or yeah. Mary Marvel. Um, uh, ooh. Mary Shazam. Let's see. Oh, actually, I do have a I do have a song for Mary Shazam that comes to mind. Uh, is it by the Jet? Joan Jet? Nah, you just you answer. What what makes you? Think about uh, it really figure? represents Long. a hero clicks figure. Um, it's just my Jet. All right, go ahead. I was gonna say like for like the Headmaster Wolverine and Cyclops, it could be uh, what's that? The the school's out for the summer song. You oh know, sure, that classic school's out for the summer song. Uh, definitely but love that Pride, song is it? that I can't Gosh. I really want to I'm, I'm not going to make a joke to make you have to edit out of the podcast I'll just try to tell you later if I remember um, but only you would get it because it's about a, a local um, no so the, the song is just by Jet it's uh, Cold Hard E-I-T-C-H and that would be Mary Shazam slash Mary Marvel from World's Finest in my opinion of her anyways if for those still spelling at home, it's bit. No, nah, I wasn't going to say it. Not on, not on this podcast. Not on this show. We're better than that. Um, because I can't stand her. I don't know. I don't know what other ones. We've done music for Hero Clicks figures before, though, Bill. I think there's some episode where yeah, Alpha we've Master done like all sorts of like music ones. If you could play, yeah, for like theme teams and like whatever. Like if you could play like a yeah, essentially like intro music for your team or figures. Yeah. Um. Pretty sure for uh, an Alpha Flight theme team, I believe I said their song would be Canadian Idiot by Weird Al Yankovic. Or maybe you said that. I don't know. You're you're more Alpha Flight person I than I am. When we had Jay on, that was part of his intro. That was. Yeah, true. It was true. <laughs> a horribly mashed up version of that. I'm sure he that. thought that was funny. And, uh, some ska band. I can't remember now. Um, yeah. Uh, there's, there's plenty <laughs> of songs. Let's see. I don't know. There'd be like something... Something fun for Wendigo, like uh, some cold wind song for Wendigo. Uh, uh, Mole Man can have the song by whatever country artist sings it, but it's just called Dirt. <laughs> Mole Man, that's your song. You get the Dirt song. Um, um, for Keep the Trains Running map bonus, you could do uh, I Hear That Train A-Coming, the, the Johnny Cash. Uh, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hear the train a-coming, coming around the bend. It's going to be a ba 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 since I don't know when. Yeah, it's I don't know all the words to it. That was pretty close. I'm pretty sure ba 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 is yeah, 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 something like that. part of the yeah. uh, <laughs> the chorus. I'm sure you could you could at least clip that out of there uh very least. Um Luke asks, "How's the shoulder doing?" My shoulder's feeling better now. Uh when he asked this on the 6th, so 2 weeks ago, uh it was very well much still hurting. Uh two days after the live stream yeah yeah it, my, was, it was, was in I lots think of pain day three i was finally no back pain but no back pain nice. even two days after i was like "Ooh, i'm pretty tender like my, my whole back was like <laughs> it's like dang um it's for a good cause james fine. asks best slash favorite vampire figure Ooh, i wonder dang. why when did he ask this? Two ten? Is this a was Morbius trailer get dropped? I wonder. I wonder what made him think of vampires. Might have been. Yeah, it might have been a Morbius reason. Yeah. Um. There's so many good vampire. I like. I really like playing vampire dials, and so I have a lot of favorites. Uh, it's a little bit harder for me to come up with the best. I will say, in my personal opinion, what I think I've had the most luck with, and what I think was one of the best. Um, would have been Rune from AVPI because uh, you could start him with the Infinity Gauntlet oh, yeah. and pick other powers and he had potential to heal twice in like a turn or like I think it was even three times because you get a heal additionally if they had power cosmic or if they were 100 points or more and then I would usually try and give him Flurry so that I could charge Flurry. Um, that and I'll say the non-prime 
uh, Gladiator from Rise and Fall has a pretty oh, yeah. strong uh, vampire style dial. Obviously, it's not a vampire dial because he's not a vampire, but it's essentially a vampire dial. But those those are what I would say are the best, in my opinion. Uh, favorites inclu- include uh, Dracula from Fear Itself, probably one of my all-time favorites. Um, just constantly does work i wish he had a way to reduce pen damage or if he wasn't as many points um obviously you could do stuff to fix that but with like a solid tk that dracula just still holds up really well uh hell cow has been one of like my favorites to try and get to okay. work um, um, i'm glad you said it because I, I if you didn't i was definitely going to. yeah it's just a ton of fun it's such a cheap little figure and it's a ton of fun for what it does that's one where like you kind of have to build around it, which isn't worth like the fifty yeah, points. A little, but... a little bit, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, like Wendigo would probably be the best. That's a vampire dial. It's not that a vampire figure. A vampire. Not but, really, yeah, but yeah, it's like a a In mystical vampire. whatever for fifteen yeah. points can potentially heal up dial. I mean, obviously, if we're going with that, then. Uh, Dark Phoenix can technically do that too, but that's not a vampire figure. Um, man. And if we got more, um, you know, WWE waves, we could have got like Vampiro. And so <laughs> awesome. It's not even great. What was the what um, was the stable of uh, that? Edge, what, and Christian, Edge and Christian when they started? were the vampires? Brood? The Brood. <laughs> the brood when yeah, it, think... What was it? Um, some movie had just come out, and so they were like, it was very was it like blade probably it was like very like 90s just weird fashion vampire dudes yeah in mean, speaking of blade shout out to the captain america and the avengers blade yeah uh, very cool you know lower point dials a vampire style dial but being able to vulture mystical monsters and stuff is is pretty dope um other favorite vampire so this is probably my favorite vampire dial and i think it is like for the points one of the best ones um it's super giants super giants a telepathic vampire oh here. yeah um she has mind control and in cap traded and i i used her a bunch with the uh what's it called captain america the principal captain america but when she uses either one and hits one or more characters you heal her one click um but she instantly goes like just one of the most rewarding from one hit to really freaking yeah. good uh, she goes from a sidestep, 11 attack, no attack power, 18 defense impervious, 2 damage outwit, um, to a running shot, 11 attack, pen blast, 19 defense invincible, 4 damage. Um, really just crazy with yeah. 7 range triple bolts. And then her top dial is a 5 damage, 12 attack, 19 invincible, running shot, pen blast. Like, really cool. Really loved it. I think I, uh, I got like her to pop off once. Right a lot. Yeah, like, it takes I a little bit her. of setup, but it like, does. Not a, it does not a lot, but yeah. But yeah, she is dope. I I really like her for like vampire dials. Uh, next up, uh, Mandalore McCall says favorite piece that's holding Captain America's shield that's not named Steve Rogers. There's a lot of like shout out pieces. I think like the OG Old Man Logan is a good shout out piece. Um, yeah, that one's pretty I, sweet. I am fond of the L.E. John Walker uh, holding, not Steve Rogers, but holding Captain America's shield. Um, the old Bucky from here itself used to be really fun to pair with Captain America's because whenever he would die, he would buff a Captain America. So, like, that was cool. I'm trying to think of, like, other characters holding a shield that are neat. Uh, Crusader, I think she can be on that list. She's really solid. I think... Yeah, Old Man Logan was the first one to come to mind because that was a really cool point in the story. He didn't hold it for very long, but that was really cool. Yeah, um, it's a really cool that, sculpt too. It is a really good sculpt. Like the the it's really sweet whole sculpt. I mean, obviously, yeah, in like the comic perspective, like thematically, it doesn't really make sense that he would be holding it in the way that he is. Up. But uh, no, <laughs> no, um, he's got yeah. knives that come out of his hands. He, <laughs> yeah. um, and he also said, yeah. But uh, who else? Uh, so there is Cole Borson, who he's not holding it. I think it's Cole Borson. That's the evil fear itself guy. He um, is standing over top of a broken Captain America shield. And that's okay. the entire yeah. representation that Steve Rogers gets in a story <laughs> where he was the main character. Um, uh, real, shame. real shame. We haven't had him clicked in a long time, but Major Victory. Is a oh, pretty, yeah. Pretty fun. Yeah, Major Victory. I mean, 
I don't think they've ever really used the shield, at least in Hero Clicks, the few, because I can only think of the Guardians of the Galaxy one. Uh, no reducers, or like maybe. He's got traded. He has traded toughness with his weird. Oh, okay. If he takes 10 damage, he takes more damage. But that's not really problem. the shield, right? That's his like power no, suit thing. Yeah, that's his power suit. Does he have ESD on that figure at all? That major victory? Uh, I do not. Um, okay. I do not know. Um, but yeah, I remember. I mean, obviously that was a common, but I remember having yeah, like yes, it later I guess. or something like that of like that guy. What a, and I thought about what just what a cool common man. Yeah, what a like I mean, a great like eleven for four pointed, running shot kind of heavy blast. back then, but he is pointed heavy. But I mean, an eleven for four run shot pen blast just with no defense, very bad, bad defense. He's very top heavy as well, but like I could respect it. Yeah, I could respect it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I can think of. I think we like you said some good good picks in there. Some non Steve Rogers golden cap shield. He has some good ones. Um, all right, next up, this one is for Simeon, uh, and I this has taken us probably over a month, and I'm, I apologize for that, Matt, to get this to him. But uh, what is your favorite character overall, Simeon? And then what is your favorite movie? Totally unrelated questions, but uh, well, so your favorite character is. Wolverine, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> favorite character in most media would be Wolverine. Um, I really love like the Hugh Jackman portrayals, especially like Logan. Obviously, was probably like peak cool Wolverine thing. Um, yeah. I don't know if he meant favorite movie, favorite character, and favorite movie. I mean, so favorite favorite movie in general it doesn't have to have that character in it. I don't oh, think it's like favorite all time movie is man. Well, how I would understand it. That's tough. Um, I think any movie starring my main, my main favorite, Mr. Dom Toretto, uh, is pretty good. Oh my good. gosh. Um, yeah. Know, it's all about family. Oh, uh, yeah. I really appreciate that kind of thing. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, truthfully, I haven't seen anything past the fourth fantastic or fantastic. Jeez. Fast, Fast and the, the Furious. <laughs> fantastic and Furious. Um, is that like your favorite movie franchise? Like number no, one or number two close. is your favorite? Oh, okay. I, like, I stopped watching them pretty early on. Like I never finished watching the Transformers movie. Never finished watching any movie like trilogy that hits like six or seven. If it's not based on a book series, then I'm like probably garbage. Even if it is based on a book series, probably garbage. Uh, movies don't tend to like keep doing well you know like the whole saying that like the sequels never do as well as like the original um if you extrapolate that out to like the sixth version except for horror movie franchises those can be because those just get goofier as they go so those are kind of fun um yeah. but no favorite movie overall oh, man if i'm thinking like something that i could just like watch at any time and really enjoy it's probably like boondock saints or, you know, just one of those, like, trashy action film ones that, like, have really cool scenes, really cool, like, cinematography, really good music scores, um, something like that. If I had to pick something that was, like, my favorite and not necessarily something that I could just watch whenever, oh, man, I, I don't know. I think it'd have to be Wolverine Origins. Yeah. Oh, no, shut up. Don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It's a that's a really tough question. Uh, it's always like hard to pin down my favorite movie because there's so many different genres that I reach for yeah. that yeah. I can't really pick like an overall. Um, Boondock Saints Say is definitely one that I've watched that like good. tons of times. As far as docu, there's only like a handful of documentaries that I've watched a ton of times, but I don't want to like. I, don't I refuse say to any believe. Of those. Anyone's favorite movie is a documentary. If your favorite movie is a documentary, you are the lamest person <laughs> I've met in my entire life. There is one that I've watched like multiple times, but I won't say the name of it or suggest it because it is hard to watch. Like, yeah, it is rough. The Brony documentary on Netflix. No, just, <laughs> no, yeah, I, a, it's hard in like a, a very different way than that. That would oh, be like okay. physical uh, pain kind of way. But like, um, no, it, so I can't say that that's my favorite. Obviously, I don't watch it like, right. often enough. Um, yeah. Man, what's what's a really solid? I I just yeah. don't know. I'm trying that's to think. Like of I just what asked I even you out have. to dinner and asked you to decide where where we're gonna eat. Like, it's <laughs> like, I don't know. They're all um, so good. <laughs> 
Dang. And disgusting. Like, Absolutely disgusting. Ah, uh, man. I know if I, like, went upstairs, I could probably find one that's, like, on my TV. Yeah. Like, like, oh, yeah, dang. Watchmen or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or, like, ah, oh, Green Mile or I don't know. I don't know what movies you've seen. I mean, those but, are all good. Could I, are could I compare there? Watchmen and Green Mile and be like, this one's better than that one? Probably not. I mean, Watchmen, clearly, but probably yeah, not. Yeah, Watchmen, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Green Mile's also really good. Uh, I will say I like Green Mile more than Shawshank Redemption. There's a Ooh. hot take for you. Sadly, history will not see it that way. <laughs> uh, but, all right. Uh, I there's hope that my non-answer. Your Matt. Your uh, non- his non-answer. Yeah. Really delves into Simeon's mind here. Um, Alex asks, what extra substances are added to the paint slash plastic in Heroquix figures in order to make them more addictive? Other than the copious amounts of cocaine, R and D apparently does. Yeah, those um, those videos where they show off the ideas and how those get bounced off the boss and the research and development crew. Really eye opening to the the process that WizKids has um, for their game. No, uh, I mean, why why is it addicting? It because it's because because it's gambling. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, gambling it's, is addicting. It's gambling. Yeah. It's gambling. It's the same reason why uh, EA got sued for loot boxes yeah. or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's... Why is it fun to play the game? Because dice exist and gambling is fun. And yeah. then why is it fun to buy hero clicks? Because uh, it's random and gambling is fun. Yeah. I've heard people suggest they take away like the random aspect before. I'm like, it would not be a collectible game at that point. Like Marvel Crisis Protocol has no, like you can tell exactly what you're going to get. And they, one, have to charge slightly more because they have bigger and more detailed sculpts and stuff but right. also because they have to make up for every set of like black cat and uh silver mane that they don't sell compared to like the the 1200 right. spidermans that they sell you know um, yeah. hero clicks gets around that because you get stuck with black cat and silver mane even if you just wanted to pull spider-man um, also like it, it would destroy rarity, which would, I mean, it'd be fine because WWE obviously was like fine, but like it would destroy rarity, which would, uh, kind of kill the secondary market in a lot of ways on hero clicks. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, it's, it's addictive because you always want to, you know, buy into ABPI to try and pull the ultra chase Thanos and then flip it, make your money back. And then some like, that's why. It's it's that, and then as far as playing goes, like Calder said, it's it's rolling dice. Rolling dice is just fun. That's why I'm making a barrier only team. Right, exactly. Right, that's that's why. <laughs> but at the same point, because we've been so used to this for a while, sort of what you said, finding out how these mechanics can win via a different route, aka mission points, aka the way Chads win games of Hero Clicks, um, is also super fun. So. Yeah, like I mean, and it's a little, it's also a little addicting because you never really know if you can pull it off. Right. That's that's what's really fun. Like when when I'm rolling up with my 15 attack flurry exploit quake six damage whatever, yeah. it's cool. It's not really fun. Yeah, it's like, not pretty. No. Pretty obviously, I'm probably gonna hit. Yeah, whenever I'm swinging at more isn't often the same not. as. Yeah. So that's. Do you remember games before achievements were added? Like before, like. Um, yes, I do. I had a PlayStation 2. Won a lot, won a lot of achievements on that. Like, there was, so, I mean, there's, like, there's stuff in PlayStation 2, like, uh, Jack was, and Dexter um, might give you, like, Jack 100%. Jack and Daxter? Like, oh, bro, I can love Jack and Daxter so much. Yeah. You, you just said the, the greatest, one of the greatest, yeah, the greatest PlayStation 2 game of all time. Love Jack Probably and Probably pretty close, yeah. So good, yeah. Um, anyways, yeah. They had, like, 100%, like all the eggs, but they didn't have, 100% it. yeah, they didn't yeah. have, like, achievements along the way or anything. So, yeah. after you beat a game like that, you kind of had to go out and like find new ways to keep it fun. Cause back then, right. like, you know, not only were most people that played games back then, I think that would be listening. were probably younger and didn't have as much disposable income as they do now. But back when you were playing games pre like, uh, trophies and achievements and yeah, stuff achievements you had it. to make your own like goals and random stuff in games and i think hero clicks is kind of like that where for some people that have been playing it for a while it's gotten a little stale and so you try new stuff you try try like doing different stuff to like play the game but just in a much different way to keep it mm-hmm. enjoyable um, obviously yeah. if you played the same five figures 
week in week out you'd get tired of it or at least i'd hope you would but yeah okay awesome right on uh next up we have uh sin here he asks with the success of raising money for charities any challenges to other hero clicks podcasts out there to raise the bar um you know i think i think everybody if you can do it uh do it like if you i would say i'm not going to name drop any podcast at all but like if you have a podcast, if you have a YouTube channel, if you host tournaments normally and you've never hosted a tournament uh, for charity, give that a go. If you, you know, do any types of giveaways or whatever, try doing one for charity. I think there are a, f a handful of people that have done I think this is our first time we've ever done anything for charity. I mean, it's, I believe so. I don't think any of our past tournaments were for this. We've done three tournaments before online, and this is our first delve into the, the charity world. So, I mean, I think you'll find it. tournament was kind of charity. I definitely lost a lot of money doing prizes. You did lose that. a lot of money. Yeah. It was charity for the people uh, that played, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, so I, yeah, I think this is the first, like, cause obviously we've participated in charity events and stuff before. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. But this is the first of like the dial H kind of stuff. And I think we, you know, because our strong suit isn't running tournaments or, you know, that kind of thing, I think yeah. we uh, leaned into our own strengths and managed to raise a decent amount. Um, right. I've seen, Physically obviously we've seen cover. like hero clicks for huntington's is probably the biggest one that's raised oh, of course. crazy amounts with like the backing of whiz kids and uh, a little bit of celebrity flair and stuff in there um I, but yeah like i said at the top of the show not too bad for two dudes right. with mics yeah i will say this if if you're worried about whatever um time money whatever you're thinking it's going to be honestly it, it's so much more rewarding in a different way when you do a tournament or you do something like this and it's it's not for profit it sure it's good to cover the cost and all that stuff but it there was something so great about the fact that we we made zero dollars and zero cents for eight hours of our lives like for what what could be a shift for some people we just sat in front of our computer or Simeon's computer had some mics and just we, we donated our time. We donated eight hours of our time to charity and doing all sorts of fun stuff, having fun with you guys. And that was so rewarding in its own way and just like turning a profit or whatever. Oh, you know? absolutely. Yeah. Like if we would have just done when that I, for ourselves. Yeah, like, yeah I, no, I think if we were like no. Twitch streamers and we we're asking for subs for whatever the however they get paid, um, I don't think we would have made nearly as much money. Uh, oh, I think most of it was because charity was the option instead of like sending PayPal to us. Yes. Um, as far as, yeah, sending out like a challenge to other Heroclix podcasts or content creators, um, I'm not going to. I think if you if you have a charity that you want to raise money for, that you'll find a way. I'm not going to say, obviously, I think that we're enjoyable to listen to. Uh, see our antics, our like YouTube stuff. Uh, that's right. our strong suit. If your podcast is not well suited for entertaining people in that kind of way, and you're more like, I don't think I could do a like a live stream charity if we just talked about like the meta for like three hours or something like that would be hard um, for me. If another podcast wants to do that, sure. Uh, if they want to host a tournament instead, like we've seen other podcasts do tournaments for charity, obviously that works well because people are not only paying in to support a cause, but also paying in to potentially get like prizing and stuff, which is, I mean, that's what the motivation some people need is. So, Next up, Mandalore McCall has a few more questions here. Uh, if HeroClix does venture into new properties and give us cool team abilities, what are some ideas you have for them? Nope. Didn't do nearly enough research beforehand to answer this question. <laughs> um, I do want to return, though, like thinking about it earlier today, I want to return to the whole move actions don't count against your action total that the Avengers and JLA team abilities used to do. Yeah. So uh, let's, I don't know, put that on a Voltron, Voltron team ability. That sound fine enough? Move action, because they're always moving. Power Rangers or Voltron, I think, would be fine with the team ability if their move actions don't count against your action total. That'd be fine. Um, yeah. Um, that's what I, that's mine. That's my idea. That's all I'd I got. like to see a, like <clears throat> kind of like a co-opting of 
existing team abilities, but like a legends, like if, if WWE ever gets released or they ever do more, um, I think it'd be cool to add a different team ability where there'd be like the WWE team ability. And then there'd be like a legend of like, you know, do like the old golden blue kind of WWF look, um, and do like a legend thing for like anyone that's been inducted into the hall of fame. And like that team ability gives them like protected outwit and like willpower. So like, like cosmic energy, um, they already have a form of protected outwit, but I think that something like that where it's just different enough where it's kind of flavorful. Yeah. I think it really depends on which property, but whatever they do, it really has to knock it out of the park. WWE was so close to making, uh, an entire set of figures worth playing like in competitive uh they missed the mark a little bit but like they were still ca- like they were casual and competitive enough that like you could win wkos and stuff with them and obviously like certain like popper league and like stuff like that you could win with them um but yeah any team ability they come up with should be something similar to that i just don't want it to be boring like you know the jedi team ability gives you esd or something lame. Ugh. I do like uh, like the Wonder Woman and Scrolls, where it, instead of giving you a specific power, it boosts a specific power. Um, so something like that, or you know, something like Masters of Evil that increases damage instead of like reducing or like reduces like you know different stats rather than defense on opposing characters you know they've got a lot of stuff they could work with if they wanted to uh it just depends on what kind of flavor and what kind of stuff we're going with uh next up mandalore mccall he's got question for the show do you like liquid laundry detergent or the powdered version i guess i've only ever had liquid laundry detergent i don't know their difference does it matter who cares ah uh... I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, my clothes no longer smell like sweat. That's yeah, kind of the. I use liquid. Um, I just do like a quick like swirl. Well, mm-hmm. I used to do a quick swirl. Now I've got a front loader, so I have to pour it in the top. But um, I don't know if I can even use powder in the front loader. I haven't even checked that. But I will say, when I used to use uh, powdered laundry detergent like years ago, uh, it was way easier to measure out. It's like you just scoop it like you're scooping anything and there's like a little like level on like the little scoop. So, um, that's way easier than the liquid laundry detergent, which my method of that is just dump enough in that I'm like, yep, that's soap. Uh, next up we have, Oh, still from chance. Never mind. Uh, if you have to give yourself a dial based on your occupations, what powers would you have? Um, I guess like what would make sense here? Uh, so I, I primarily, for ranching i do all of our fencing work i build the fences the barbed wire all that jazz um barrier stuff you're gonna say barrier it's barrier i'm gonna say barrier so me and i'm gonna talk let's talk about barrier that's like if I had a, i've been really interested in barrier about <laughs> barrier today than any other day in my entire life have i uh, talked about barrier so much um i guess barrier <laughs> uh, I really don't know what else. Pro- uh, Perplex, because cattle leave me utterly perplexed by how absolutely stupid they are. Side Battle step, Fury, that boot scooting. Uh, I'll do yeah, that. You side do. Step. I think I get Battle Fury. How much boot scooting boogieing do I do, Simeon? I don't know. You know something I don't. <laughs> I don't boot scoot boogie that much. Uh, I think I get Battle Fury because if you've ever worked cattle with anyone ever, you you know you just yell at each other. You say some pretty terrible things, and once it's all over, it's like I'm sorry about that. I think I get toughness. I get toughness because I've taken quite a lot of damage in the in the uh, in the corrals there. So I don't know, Simeon. I never think been bit calling. by a horse. I've never been bit by a horse. I've been kicked in the head by one. Dang, that explains yeah. a few things. But geez, probably does. Yeah. <laughs> jeez. Uh, <laughs> we used to have a horse that uh, if you had treats out, they would like walk up behind you bite and you? Like, bite your shoulders and stuff. It's not pleasant. It's like pretty, pretty dense teeth, pretty strong jaws. There was uh, one time that our horse uh, broke his leg, so I had to do an energy explosion on a horse. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he can't use that. Never mind. It was a precision strike. Never mind. Uh, it actually was a precision strike. Yep, yep. We, for legal reasons, it has to be a precision strike. <laughs> yeah. We had Anyways. a horse freeze in our uh, lake one time. 
tried to walk across the ice water or the Ooh. like iced over portion and yeah, it, it was like right going. up on a berm it fell through and couldn't get up the berm like so it was like halfway in the water and by the time we found it it was did uh Earth so neutralized. if i my occupation being what it is uh what powers would i have so i'd have one of the the oldest hero clicks mechanics which is soaring or hovering um because obviously once i'm on top of a billboard it's like way harder to get to me like, you can't just punch me up there there's no way um probably get you leap climb okay there i don't go. leap a whole lot but i do climb quite a bit um it's, I guess like something like plasticity or uh, so he's asking for a dial based. I, I'm just giving just powers, saying, obviously. You see yeah. dial? Um, but, yeah, dial yeah like, I think plasticity. Yeah. Well, I just said what powers would you have? Yeah, Very what quick. powers would you have? Uh, plasticity would make sense because a lot of what I do yeah. is just grip. Like I just hold things when the wind's blowing. So, yeah. Um, not necessarily like other people, obviously not other people. There's no one up there, but, uh, yeah, I'm still, I'm still plasticizing the, the billboard to where it is. Um, man, what other powers would make sense? I want to say like ESD, but that obviously doesn't make sense because no one's yeah. shooting at me up there. Uh, combat reflexes would kind of make sense. Cause like, it's going to be really hard to punch me if I'm up there. Um, almost impossible, some would say, unless you're like Michael Jordan in Space Jam and your arm just stretches infinitely. Let's see. No, leap climb. Yeah, yeah, leap climb. Yeah. Uh, maybe some ver version of blades. I do a lot of cutting up there, a lot hey, of you slicing. Could, you you passed your, um, what's it called thing, right? The uh, without CPR, you could have support. C oh, my, I have my CDL, sort of, yeah. sort of like support. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Basic yeah, first aid. got my CDL. I'll have my my boom certification soon. And yeah, my crane operator license soon. Um, Ooh, I don't know what those would really lend me power wise. Uh, Giant reach. <laughs> yeah, there crane you go. Operating. Giant reach. Yeah, to boom myself up places. Um, improved movement elevation. That kind of goes with leap climb, I guess. But it could be a telekinesis. You could in, in some ways. Yeah, it, not it, really. It would make more sense for telekinesis because I could also like carry other objects up there too. So there is that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, I'll say perplex because when people see me up there dancing, they're very perplexed. You dance? Do you dance on a billboard? I do. Not like a lot often, you? but okay. like sometimes you just you're listening to music and a jam comes on, and you right. see all like the cars, and you're like. They don't know who I am. They can't make fun of me down there. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do the Dougie or whatever. Oh, mm, I don't like that. But yeah, okay. I do a lot of the right. um, the Gangnam style like lasso maneuver. Oh, I find that pretty fun. But Simeon, why? I don't why, know. Though? I've got trash taste and dance moves. That's what. That's all I can say. Really, and it's old taste that hasn't <laughs> it's pretty bad developed. yeah it's pretty bad yeah old. yeah i'm still, I'm still uh, all hitting right the whip every now and then Hit the whoa do some dabs anyway. some nays. Uh, i can't dabs don't count as a do they they can't i don't know anyways uh luke luke, luke asks for the realms 055 malkith we all know someone has to pull him how would you stack the deck to make him as competitive as possible? Uh, my team, Malkith. So just for people that don't know, Malkith has to trade open the casket of ancient winners. Ugh. I had a yawn because he's just that boring. Incapacitate. <laughs> when a friendly character uses Incapacitate, after resolutions, gain one mission point for each hit character that was given a second action token. Now, theoretically, this could be one of the fastest ways to get mission points. However, Malkith is... 100 points. Uh, he has no move and attack at all top dial. He has a very close combat based style, so he's a wasted 100 points basically on your team. Who um, is really bad at even trying to give out tokens. Just not having at least sidestep top dial yeah. just kills him. Seven himself, range, yeah. Anyway. Even though he's triple target traded in cap, surprisingly uh, so bad. At surprisingly bad at giving people action tokens is wild. Uh, so I have... 
Double shifting focus Wonder Woman. Uh, we're just going to say we're starting with the armor. It doesn't matter. Uh, you, can, you can start with any Wonder Woman, but the one that has the most speed and can fly will just be good. Um, and then tempo. So the idea here is that one of the Wonder Womans carries the other with a 13 speed, uh, moving them however far across the map. Then they can in-cap with the lasso each for free. You know, and then they can also shift out and then do the lasso again if they so need, if they somehow missed some people or whatever. So that can hopefully keep, you know, with two Wonder Romans, maybe keeps your opposing team pretty, uh, pretty stacked up. Now, if they got barrier, I don't know, I don't know what you're going to do. You're, you're done. But, uh, that's what, that's why we're starting off with the armor Wonder Romans. They're not getting hit easily right away. And then, you know, tempo plus three speed, whatever. Uh, she could also move and just fly up with Malkith as well for a potential uh, prob on it as well. And then uh, last 15 points for 300-point team, we got Mary Jane because paparazzi's some in-cap. There we go. That's that's Malkith. I actually kind of want to try this team now, but I don't have any shifting Wonder Woman, so. Yeah, I don't have enough of the. I have some, but not enough of the shifting Wonder Woman. Right. Um, I didn't build a full team, but... Uh, I will say, like, the Rocket Raccoon from the same set, the Chase Rocket Raccoon, has energy explosion. Then when Rocket uses it after resolutions, give each hit character an action token. This will not work with Malekith's uh, thing unless Rocket hits first. Because Malekith has to, it's after resolutions, gain one mission point for each hit character that was given a second action token. So if a Rocket Raccoon gives them the first one, and then you follow up with in-cap, it'll work. Um, Rocket having a 12 with a 12 attack with energy explosion and triple target means that you're going to be able to, if it's like a big team, you're going to be able to in cap a lot of people and you're all, well, not in cap, yeah. but you're going to token up a lot of people and you can combo that with dealing damage, which is pretty sweet. And then he's got the whole plasticity and opposing characters within four, consider him adjacent within four in line of fire. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to do a full Asgardian thing kind of full as guardian thing you can throw on uh the rare mary jane who makes uh as guardian and deity keywords spider-man family and then you can easily pop in uh the other mary jane watson uh that spits out paparazzis those are really sweet yeah. uh we already talked Wonder about Woman's, uh gold armor Wonder Woman does have deity so yeah. you can toss her on there as well yeah, and then you can switch going. out afterwards. Yeah, um, we yeah, talked about Shang Chi having triple target flurry in cap. Yeah, Pretty so good. by himself, Shang Chi could potentially uh, in cap three, three mission people points. twice. Yeah, three One mission turn. points by himself. Yeah. Pretty solid. Um, and then we before the show started, we were talking about in Golden Age. There's Captain America principled who. Oh yeah. Not great because you know there wasn't way to, there wasn't really a way to win with that Captain America principled and no. even with in cap being able to deal like unavoidable damage to some characters it wasn't amazing um, but in like a golden age or silver age game that Captain America principled uh, can really boost Malekith because he's got the he's got the plus one. Uh, continuity trait that is free when a, a friendly character uses force blast in cap or smoke cloud during a costed action this turn after resolutions remove an action token from them so your whole team just keeps going 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 um, it'd be really quick depending on the size of your opponent's force it'd be really quick with Malekith to pull something like that off uh, and then you've got the minus four which is free if no character has made an attack this turn until your next turn characters can't make attacks except using in cap which unless your opponent is also packing a lot of in cap would essentially get you one free turn um there's also stuff like uh Mr. Mixopotic from Golden Age the Superman Wonder Woman set that can give characters and that like, caught in his pulse wave up to two action tokens so you could pulse wave give up to two which would like be one in most cases oh, yeah. or none and then follow up with some in cap on the the other ones just to really nail right. down like a huge force there's a lot of stuff yeah. um i actually you know if malekith was just a few points less if it wasn't a third of your build i would mm -hmm. definitely be considering trying to do 
some big heavy in cap kind of swarm stuff because oh yeah it it's one of those powers that is costed really cheap well usually costed fairly cheap um and so you it get some be pretty really expensive good combos used to be an expensive power in cap used to be kind of spendy i mean for a while you'll there. still see some characters that have a top a dial too much and, yeah and yeah that. they're costed way too much but i mean that shang chi with Triple target flurry in cap is yeah. an awesome option for 50 points. Cheap. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of energy explosion in cap kind of stuff. There's a lot of just options in general for it, but honestly, um, yeah. Is there a ring that really? gives in cap? Probably, right? It's got to be, right? There's got to be an object ring. Well, exospecs definitely gives in cap, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The zero ring barrier in cap, the barrier okay. is free. Yeah. yeah, zero gives it. So yeah, throw the zero ring on someone with a uh, triple target energy explosion, and you've got massive amounts of the first. Well, the first time anyone ever equips the zero ring for the in cap part of it, probably. <laughs> Man, I just can't wait to in cap my opponent. I really <laughs> like so spending an action to. I will say, uh, what was it? Was the the title Harley? I don't think hers was listed as in cap, but no. again, like. Yeah, really solid yeah, golden age thing. What was it? Again, Minus two. Looking at this, gave her like plus three attack, energy explosion. Yeah, everybody get action token, something cool. That was looking at this mural kith. That was crazy. This reminds me about how how bad they how dirty they did him in this set. Like he's the main villain of War of the Realms, and he's one of the worst figures in this set. He is so bad. He's so awful. This this version of mural kith is supposed to be like. You know, I've brought the War of the Realms to everywhere, and I'm going to destroy all of them and rule them, or, like, whatever. Like, this great big warmonger, you know, throughout all the nine realms, technically ten, I guess, in this story. And just, like, he's so lame. So bad. Like, why? I don't know why WizKids decided to, like, gave us such a generic Melkith dial for this, when he is the big bad. I will say the evil dude of War of the Realms. <laughs> Although the the mighty Thor sculpt is way better, um, this new one is somehow infinitely stronger than the previous one. For yeah. 175 points, uh, eight clicks long, the the mighty Thor chase. Uh, you know, granted, came with the casket of ancient winters. Oh my! Uh, took oh, max of damage from Dang. range attacks. Yeah, look at that starting wow. dial of toughness. Ugh. At least he has sidestep, but yeah, it was Oof. bad. What kind of dial is this? I've never looked at this figure before in my life. What oh, a dial. I used to play. I used Oof. to play this guy Oof. all the time because I really wanted the casket of ancient winters to be something that you could actually like pull off. It was just it was something you had to like drop and pass around and like trade and stuff. Um, so, casket of ancient winters was power. If this character is a hundred points or more, give it three Fimble Winter tokens at the end of, end of each player's turn. So, at the end of like the turn you activate this, your opposing character's end of their turn, and then your next turn, you remove a Fimble Winter token from the equipped character. If you do, give an action token to each of the active player's characters within seven squares without the Asgardian cosmic or deity keywords. If you remove the last Fimble Winter token, KO this object. So you had to keep being able to give power actions to somebody. So you either needed a really solid leadership. You obviously, whoever activated this needed the Asgardian cosmic deity keywords. You kind of had to build around that. Um, but I really wanted a way to like trade this back and forth, keep it going. So there was just this thing that was constantly giving uh, action tokens to everyone within seven like on the opposing team. But even with this object, the mighty Thor Malekith is so bad. Yeah. Like they, man, they just don't like this character, I don't think. The sculpt is amazing. I really loved the sculpt in the mighty Thor. Uh, but yeah, terrible figure. Terrible figure. They didn't even give him uh, nice. mystics. The new one's got mystics. I wonder why he gets super senses all the time. He has some elf senses going on. I don't know. Unless he got super senses, back end super senses on both these dudes. Yeah. Um, and then last one on Discord here, Mandalore McCall says, "Question for the show: What is the best flavor of Fago? Uh, again, Fago is like what you guys are talking about on the Discord. Simi and I have never mentioned that on the podcast <laughs> once. 
that is all juggalos and Michigan people that have yeah. been like bringing up faggot. I think the... we, we have never drank. I've never drank it. I don't like pop. I don't like random off brand connoisseurs of pop. <laughs> um, I don't know why you're asking us this because that's not our thing. That was totally all in the discord. I will say, if you find a no brewery good. and they have homemade like root beer, that's some good stuff. Um, I like 1819. I think that's I think that's a brand of root beer around here, South Dakota anyways, 1819. Uh, there's I an off brand called Dad's. It's just Dad's root beer. Um, Dad's root beer. It's pretty yeah. good. It's not bad. Uh, but yeah, most of the time you don't get other flavors. It's just Seems to be just root beer. Uh, yeah. Best flavor of Fago is um, back in 2012, they had a promotional one that was just called Whoop Whoop Flavor, and it was like the, the mystery Airheads flavor. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess. Sure. <laughs> no, I, I honestly don't know. The only Fago I've really had is mostly the orange, and by mostly, I mean like twice in my life. And then I had the red once, whatever that is, like strawberry or something. I had that once. But yeah, I I just don't seek it out. Actually, I haven't had soda in quite a while, so I I don't seek it out. Yeah, because it's, cause it's gross. Uh, it's fey gross. Hey. Uh, I didn't know. That, was, that was a bad one. No one has yeah. to laugh at that. Got him. Uh, got him. Next up, though, on Facebook... I believe I, it's probably a question pointed toward me. Crow Tally asks, what's your favorite Captain America dial? Um, there's a lot of good ones. Uh, personal favorite uh, that I've just played the most of that I just fell in love with right away is probably Captain America. A resilient. That was pretty awesome. Resilient. Excuse me. I still don't know why I can't ever say that word right. But Cap Resi, the title from Earth X, I absolutely love. I love the Earth X story. I love that version of captain america we got i love the first first earth x captain america that's the one who when he was coming out i'm like oh i've got to read this story never seen that before um so yeah absolutely love the cap resi dial as well as the ones that really feel like captain america um the captain dial is really good for the captain version of steve rogers as well as i love both dials for captain america in the captain america set so the Uncommon one is very, very solid, as well as the Fast Forces one has the follow-through power, which just feels the follow-up power, excuse me, which just feels so good for Captain America. If the Fast Forces one was 50 points and then had some kind of shield bounce ability, then it would be, like, in my opinion, perfect. I think Captain America is, like, a toughness guy. I don't... I think the most you should give Cap is invulnerability. I'm honestly not a big fan of when they give him impervious. I'm like, okay, yeah, if, if we're saying that's purely the shield, then yes. Um, but it still feels wonky. Um, dials I just love. Love, love the Empire dial. Very basic, simple stats, long stuff, never given up type Captain America dial, which is great. And then I think you can't not talk about Captain America dials without mentioning the Avengers, Black Panther, and the Illuminati, uh, Captain America, uh, a that very rare. well rounded, yeah. that rare, yeah, 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 not the chase, Ooh, not the chase, um, but that rare Captain America is very good, very rounded dial. Um, and then for like movie Captain Americas, I love the Winter Soldier one, he's a little high point costed, but uh, I did like the way they did his shield bounce ability, uh, for the common Captain America in the Winter Soldier movie, so um, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, my pick would have to be the the one that's truest to, like, Steve's character, which would be the 072 ADW chase. Um, oh, you're a scumbag. You know, like... <laughs> yeah, you're the worst. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, there's... His character? Uh, I actually I hate you. almost picked up um, the Captain America from Secret Invasion, uh, Isaiah Bradley. Oh, yeah. He's like hulk sized in that sculpt and he's big dude he's huge yeah you think that like you know the new terrain quote unquote terrain that like we've been putting on figures yeah. is like cool now but like some of the stuff back in secret invasion and like hammer of thor uh they were like putting them on was really cool like made for really dynamic sculpts you know um i don't know what he's jumping off of here but it's like an some iron girder stuff, or something dude. yeah some stuff he just really cool uh it's, i almost picked really that one up good. though 
It's like um, it says it's fifty cents. It. I think it's like I'm cheaper being, online. Gotta be thirty five cents. Yeah. Somewhere. Um, I so this just makes me think. I don't know if if they do legacy cards for Disney Plus, which I I assume they will because they've done them for every set so far. Do you think? This is just random point of discussion here. We can honestly use this for an entire other podcast. But do you think that they're going to try to do comic book characters like they've been doing the whole time? Or do you think because it's Disney Plus, will they try to do Marvel MCU. movie characters, MCU characters? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, so I think it'll that's... I think it'll be a mixture. So I think because we're getting like some what if stuff, I think we might see um Ooh, something from like characters. the what if set like yeah i would guess it'd be like if i was gonna throw out a just dumb guess that doesn't have any reasoning i would guess like jessica jones like agent of shield just because it doesn't mm. make any sense um, yeah that doesn't make any sense which is right up whiskey's alley right <laughs> um, like my first daughter's like yo cosmic spider-man but like no yeah no, that's not gonna happen i don't think yeah. we'll we might see a super rare uh it won't be like goblin king or cosmic spider-man definitely um, not if we see one from what if, but then yeah, if they go back to the age of Ultron movie, the Avengers yeah. movie, um, there's some really solid stuff in those sets, uh, like Quicksilver. I'd really like to get. Ooh, that would be like, a great one. Yeah, that Quicksilver, Quicksilver redone. Yeah. Um, and Especially that that would be prime to stuff a, to um... repoint cost because this is when yeah. they were like, ah, oh, you know what's a great point value to end on three. You can make oh, nice right. round teams when one of your figures comes out to 63 points or, you know, whatever. Uh, also, if they grab some Ultrons and stuff, might make that Ultron right. Prime yeah. a little bit uh, more easy Fine. to pull off. This Isaiah just makes me think about it because obviously Isaiah Bradley's in Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah. And this would be a really this would be a really sweet figure to get a legacy card of. Like, I really liked this Isaiah Bradley. I think a lot of people did, like me is iconic and when i started playing this was actually a great 49 points oh it's um, still you may, you may look at it now like top be like, dial, eh, not terrible iffy yeah even though he's a, he's a nine for three let's just give him trade a close combat expert and then that's really almost all you have to do make him 40 points trade a close combat expert living legend trait now we're making money that's yeah. a great dial or just close combat expert and it's still good like you don't even have to add all that extra stuff but like this is such a solid dial like such a just charge you know top dial 18 nine for three eight speed charge um for a close combat dude seven clicks of life it's just gnarly how long this dude lasted for 49 points it's just so cool i think this would be maybe we could we could honestly make a whole episode of our um legacy, legacy card, picks card picks for, like upcoming I mean, there, sets like, yeah there is a thread next week uh there's a thread like uh Ooh. dream legacy card picks or whatever okay um, that thread redemption next week, but we could be like realistic, and this could yeah, be like, a, we like ones that would actually set fit sets out. rather than just right. ones that we really like. Yeah, is it too much to ask that the spinoff, uh, what was it, uh, Bucky and the Winter Soldier? Uh, I don't know, oh, Falcon the, Winter Soldier, Falcon, Falcon Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Um, is it too much to ask that we get a spinoff of a spinoff and we get like an Isaiah Bradley back in the day show? That'd be so cool. Like Agent Carter, but I'd be down for that. But it'd be, you know, yeah. cool and good. I mean, I believe he was in Vietnam, is what they, they changed it to, I believe, in the show. So that'd yeah, be really cool. That probably tracks. I think they said seventies or sixties, yeah. so something like that. Maybe like yeah. Korea or Vietnam or something. Yeah. That'd be cool. All right. I'm down for it. That's it. That's all the questions I got. Facebook on whatever. So we're gonna do a quick Jedi Legend Hero Clicks. Of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. That person says a little terminology assistance for rules and powers understanding. So rounds are made up of turns. So we might just go over a bunch of like weird hero clicks verbiage you that you only said like tournaments and stuff. So um, a round, uh, a round in game terms, I guess is like two turns, like one turn, basically. Uh, so Simi takes a turn, I take a turn. That would be like one round of turns. Um, but also, they also say like round one in the tournament is like that game. So right. like round one, round two, round three, um, which is, you know, a little bit more confusing. And then your turn is made up of actions, power actions, move actions, free actions, whatever, right? Um, 
this is one thing Jedi says that I don't know where he gets this word, but then he says an act an action usually follow a sequence. Um, yes, normally you do a sequence of actions if that's what you mean, but a sequ so far sequence has never been a term ever in hero clicks. Uh, um, the, was it like I don't believe so turn sequence because like for a while they were pushing the oh, yes. beginning of uh, turn, were turn free sequence. action yes. stage you're right uh, to, like, so you're right yeah costed um, action state like that always, kind of thing you're right it, that actually is a yeah. turn sequence you are correct i always called it the order of operations which right is not it's not a term correct. that like is referenced in most right. powers right uh, no one ever says sequence a lot in powers no. but yeah that's true so you have a, you have a beginning of your turn and then you just have a turn where you take costed actions and stuff so like there's uh, beginning of the turn where it's just the power will normally say this happens at the beginning of your turn which you have to do before you take any free action or costed action whatsoever costed action is an action that you would get an action token for right. um, like the new destroyer and also, the non-prime it would also make sure you cost do his free move before total. you sidestep right exactly yeah, stuff like um, that stuff like that oh jinx oh, oh. i owe you a fake oh dang oh, make it rock and ride though <laughs> um and then for for another really quick terminate term bleh, tournament tournament verbiage that some guys some of you guys might know i know i didn't get it at all um pop eight cuts a swiss uh swiss uh or swiss then cuts top eight swiss is just the first rounds you do right before you cut to top eight i don't know why they call it swiss no one's ever told me I don't know where it comes from. It's just, I don't yeah, know what a Chinese tournament has like to do with it. Round robin but... is like another tournament tournament saying. Yeah. Um, like yeah, it's so in Swiss you don't have to worry about being out if you lose a game. Normally right. after the cut you do it does become single elimination. Uh, so and what cut are, means is yeah, basically exactly what it means. Top eight, we cut everybody else is eliminated, and we cut to the top eight players with the most wins and points, etc. Um, but yeah, go ahead. Keep going, Simeon. Sorry. No, yeah, that's just a... I mean, so tournaments are broken into those two sections. Because if you did a Swiss version of the top cut, then, like, it'd be a real headache and you'd have to play way more games. Um, but, yeah, Swiss is usually to get a good pool of, like, essentially, you know, for better or worse, like, who, like, the top players are. Uh, obviously, that's not, like, always the case. Like, some people only miss the top cut by a few points or whatever. Um, but then like that, you are reseeded for lack of a better term, reseeded in another tournament with just those top 16, 18 or 16 or eight or whatever, 32. Uh, and then it becomes single elimination, which progresses the tournament quite a bit faster usually at that point. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Hey man, what a what a classic episode! What like a hour fifteen, solid episode we just we just pumped out here. Hour twenty, whatever it is, uh, feels good. Yeah. Feels good. Good normal length episode. Well, guys, hope you're enjoying your War of the Realms release and all that jazz. Uh, I hope you guys are excited, like how I'm excited for the release of Disney Plus to actually spend money on a set. That's good. Um, <laughs> That'll be enough trashing War of the Realms yeah. for this week. And if you want to trash this some podcast. War of the Realms, uh, you know, CoolStuffInc.com doesn't have the singles out yet, but you can still buy boosters, cases, bricks. They still have the Fast Forces, uh, the Token Packs, and the Play at Home Kit, which I think comes with Spider-Man? Is that right? It's Play at Home Kit come with Spider-Man? I have no idea. I didn't buy I the Play at Home Kit. No, it comes um, with Thor. Oh, Thor, oh, Thor we and, saw uh, 18 years ago. Yeah, that's right. It comes Recruiter with Thor, Thor and those maps, the the two yeah. reprinted maps. Uh, but soon, Cool Stuff will have their singles up. That's how I'm going to buy product. It's going to be direct from their singles because I, I've already bought a little bit into the sealed and I don't need a whole lot. Odin Destroyer would be cool. Certain things would be really cool. Don't need them, though. Going to save up for Disney+. Plus. And if you're in the same train of thought as me and Calder, you should check out coolstuffinc.com where you can find things like I just said. You can find board games like Robo Rally. coolstuffinc.com Happy Trails. That thing. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I say happy trail. Slow it down there, bud. I'm happy trailing here. <laughs> <laughs>
So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Yes, it's real. You're gonna be hearing from my lawyer.